Hi, this is Boone Slot Car Garage. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Boone and this is Boone Slot Car Garage. And tonight, well tonight we're going to do a video that Ashley was not planning on doing. Yes, I, I, because I didn't think of this video. <laughs> no, I didn't. But if you've been hanging out and stuff like that you've noticed here lately on saturdays i have started to do live streams yes so i started doing these live streams and it's i call it behind the curtain and and what it is is anything that i have going on on my workbench or something like that i just turn the camera on and i just start working <laughs> and you know the chat's going on and stuff like that but it's kind of cool because, you know, if you have a project or something else at home, you can join in, you can build that, and you're not building alone, right? <laughs> so it's kind of cool. But if you've watched that, my last one that I did, which was this one right here, I went ahead and started doing some scenery on Deception. Yeah, so I decided that it's about time I get off my butt and I start to actually do something with the actual layout. Yeah. It's probably a good idea. I'm I'm healing up. I was able to get on top of the table and do some cleaning and stuff. Not 100%. You can see this shoulder still dropped. And, and, yeah, well, yeah. But I'm I'm healthy enough that, yeah, let's start doing some scenery. So I started doing some scenery. And got done with some stuff. And I've been, I've been sitting and I've been looking and stuff like that. I'm actually saving this area and not touching it, well, trying not to touch it, to, to keep on going with the live stream this, this on Saturday and pick up or kind of where I left off. But that's nor here or there. What, what the issue was is I started to look further down the road as far as, okay, Boone, what's your next step? What are, what are we going to do in this area? And if you have a wood routed track, Fortunately, you do not have the dilemma that, that those of us that are playing with plastic track have. Yes. And it, it doesn't matter what manufacturer you have. You could have what I have, which is scale electric. You could have Carrera. You could have Polycar. You could have the new scale auto. Or you could even go back with the old monogram tracks in, in Aurora and but it doesn't matter what plastic track you're playing with. We all have the same issue. Yes, we all have the same issue. And what that little culprit is called is the power base, right? So here's my power base, okay? I run Scale Electric Sport Track. And uh, I run the Arc Pro, which is their digital system. And this is the power base for the system. And I, I understand that that's, slot cars have come a long ways since the 60s and, and everything else. But there's one piece that has really never changed. Okay. <laughs> and that is this little piece of track right here. Yes, this little piece of track. And for someone who is just putting out a bunch of track on a table or you put it on the floor and you're not worried about scenery or anything like that, this video probably has nothing to do with you <laughs> because convenience is, is that it's all put together and you're going to go ahead and lay it out. And you're going to run the cars for a while and stuff like that. Maybe to live it out, leave it out for the day, maybe a week, maybe a month, but eventually you're going to pick it up, put it in a box, set it back in the closet till the next time you want to go ahead and play. But there are some of us that decide that we want to go ahead and, and, and do great things. <laughs> and we, we decide that we want to put a circuit 
inside our house. Yes, we're not, we're not happy with just track laying on the floor or on a ping pong table with nothing else on it. No, we want to build an empire. <laughs> we want to be able to, for those times that we're, we're, we're with our, our track and everything else, we want to escape to a happy place, whether that is Monza or it is Spa or it's Nubering or maybe it's Road America or who knows, maybe it's that, that, that track that was just down the street when you're growing up or it's something that you just decide it's your own creation and you're going to put it together, right? But it doesn't matter what we do. There's one piece of track that is a thorn in our side and that piece of track is this one right here because we can paint it like you can see that i, I painted this so it, it, it looks better right it looks better but it has this like tumor on the side of it that just doesn't fit now there are manufacturers out there making buildings and stuff like that and there's a few of them that actually created buildings that you can put over the top of this. You can hide it. <laughs> it's kind of like sweeping dirt underneath the carpet, right? You can hide it. We, we can put a hut on it. Yes, we can put a hut on it and it, it will make it look pretty. <laughs> Problem is the, the the structure now is right next to our track. Yes, it's, it's just right there. <laughs> so, if you were building maybe a, a city metropolis and you had buildings or, or maybe a small village like a rally track, you might be able to get away with that. Put a hut over the top of it, a power base hut, <laughs> and hide it. Hide it. Yes, hide it. We don't want to look at it. But in, in a situation like I have, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. If I, if I decide to put a hut, over the top of my power base i'll have my scenery all laid out and then i'll have this hut that is like right on the edge of the track and that just does not work for me so yeah we have this issue called a power base and tonight on boone slot car garage we are going to take this little guy and we're going to take him into surgery and we are going to remove this growth that's on the side of my track and we got to get rid of it. We got to hide it. We got to put it, put it somewhere cool, right? So instead of being on the side of the track, we can put it, we, we could be like some of those wood router guys that have that elaborate. Yeah. But the thing is, is that main important thing is we're going to get rid of this growth. We're taking it into surgery and we're chopping this little, off of there okay so that is what i have planned tonight no i wasn't planning on doing this video but i am not going to be controlled by my power base anymore we've got to fix this situation so that is what we are doing tonight on boon slot car garage so grab yourself a cup of joe a donut yeah, let's do this. Okay, so here we are. We have our, our victim laying out on our stainless steel gurney here. And we're about ready to commence surgery and remove this growth. <laughs> so, so let's just kind of stop and pause for a second. Now, the kind of the cool thing about this video and I was thinking is because I have a digital system, right? It's not an analog system. It's a digital system and it's, you know, scale Electrix arc pro system. So there's a little bit more going on inside this box than per se a regular analog track. And if you have just an analog track, a lot of the same stuff that I'm going to cover in this video is a lot of the subject matter that you're going to be confronted with as well if you decide to do this surgery. So first thing we need to do is assess our situation and take a 
better look at the subject at hand, right? So what we have here is a scale electric arc pro power base. And yeah, like I said, I, I painted the track, I, I did my effect on it, everything else. And this is, you know, when I when I had Deception originally before I moved it. And I, I actually had guardrail that was down inside here. And I tried to, you know, it was like putting lipstick on a pig. It, it doesn't matter if it looked pretty. At the end of the day, it was still a damn pig. So that's what I got going on here. And that, you know, those of us with the situation, that's what we got going on. We, we beautify our track. We make it all gorgeous. And then we just don't want to look at this little area of the track. No, we don't want to look at this area because... It just doesn't fit. <laughs> so that's what we got. Now, the cool thing about this video being that it is a digital power base, if you have an analog power base, a lot of the same subject matter that I'm going to cover in this, it, it, you'll be able to use. I mean, it's just the same type of stuff. And if you have a digital, again, there's, there's going to be some stuff that, yep, that you're going to be able to use in this video. So Let's go ahead and take a better look at our situation here. So here is our subject, our, our little Arc Pro. Yeah. And you can see I tried to beautify the track. It didn't work. And we still have this friggin' cyst on the side of here that we got to get rid of. So let's go ahead and we'll turn this thing over. And I've already taken a look at this earlier today. And... um hence why there's missing screws in here because I just went ahead and put a couple screws in it to hold it together put my extra screws in my little container here which I'm gonna need to take these out so that I don't lose my screws don't want to lose anything have a container that you can keep everything nice and safe but what we need to do is let's go ahead and pull this thing apart so what it is is just Philip screws that are in this now i don't know with carrera if it's phillips if it's allen head my guess it's it's probably very similar to the same construction um i know that it's shaped a little bit different but at the end of the day it doesn't matter what they did it's still a power base it still looks ugly it's got this growth on the side yeah we got to get rid of it chop it off so let me go ahead and get I got two screws down let me get these two off Okay, there's that one. There's this one. Let's go ahead and support this a little bit because it's wanting to drop. Okay. Do that. Let's get the screwdriver over there. Let's slide this to the edge. We gotta get these. Yeah, there we go. So we got that screw out. And let me get this little screw out. These are tiny little guys. Okay. So make sure you have somewhere safe to put those. Actually, I'm going to put this lid back on there because and stick it away from my general. Yeah, so I don't knock it over. And then, yeah, we've yeah done that before. So what we got here, let's open this up. Okay, so he's going to put up a fight. No, no, yes, we're going to pull you off. All right. So here we go. All right. So pretty straightforward. You can see in here, I don't want to tweak this too far. Okay. You can see in here, and I'm going to grab something to point with a pencil. Yes. Trusty pencil. We can point with this. So what we got, we got a power wires running to each rail. Okay, so we got right up here, we got a black one that's right here in a red one. So positive, negative, same thing that's down here on the other side. Okay, right here. So you have these two, but being that this is a digital system, we have this magic little loom right here and a magic little loom right here. Okay, so... We have a couple ways we can do this. And I've kind of thought about this. And what I am going to plan on doing, we raise this up, okay? Kind of see that 
these wires, the way they route them and everything else, are dropping in kind of the same vicinity down here. So the idea is I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole in my layout. And what we're going to have to do is cut these wires, right? Yep, scary stuff. We're going to have to cut them, lengthen them by soldering in new wire onto this, right? So we can run these wires down underneath the table, okay? And then we can have this growth gone. <laughs> and this can be down below eye level on the side of the track. So that way you can still work all the little buttons, the little analog switch that's over here. You can still access the port on the side and everything else. We're just going to get this out of the damn way. And if we open this up, okay, now this is obviously I'm, I'm playing with scale electric, right? Uh, I don't know if Carrera has the same type of doodads going on the side as far as plugging in stuff and whatnot. When you take this top off, just be careful, okay? If there's things that are connected through the side like this, okay? This has a switch right here. It also has an area, a jack. It's a USB port that's here on the side, okay? Just be careful when you're taking this off. Don't go yarding it off because you might do some damage, right? I'm sure in the small print when I purchased this, when I looked at the owner's manual, it probably told me do not take it apart. Well, now we're not following rules tonight. So, yeah. So just, just be cautious taking this apart. So I have a little switch that's here. And come on. It's a little bit tight. We just want to move him over and off. All right. Now, we've got him off. Now, let me go ahead and show you this. All right. So we have the lights and everything up here. And anyone that is familiar with the arc, you know about the buttons as far as programming the cars and everything else, right? So there's got to be some type of wire loom that's connected to this. Well, ta-da, we got something. So let's go ahead and open this up. And we have this wire that actually feeds into a circuit board on the upper portion of this. All right. So I don't want to get into that. Okay. I'm not interested in trying to reinvent the ball on this thing. I just want this damn cyst off the side of my track. So Let's go ahead and let's leave this kind of detached. Now everything is just kind of dangling around. But being that we have that wire loom and stuff, let's be careful. Let's not mess anything up. And it gives you a fair amount of room. Okay. Don't want to yank on it because we could damage some stuff. The other thing with this is kind of cool too is, you know, I've had this for a few years now. And there's a buildup of a bunch of different crud and stuff down here so before i decide that i'm going to assemble this when i get to the end of it let me make sure that i blow this all out so i'm actually going to use a little bit of com compressed air and blow this out i don't think i'm going to go in there and go crazy brushing on anything but let's i'll get some of the the dirt and, and grime out of there the dust so there's this go ahead and set that there now if we pull this back, you can see that we have, it's clipped in here and it's clipped in here. So this has to do with the, uh, the digital portion of it. Originally I thought, well, I'll just disconnect it. And again, it's connected to a circuit board. These little clips sometimes can be kind of a pain in the butt. I think what I would rather do than doing that is I'm just going to go ahead and snip these and solder them in. Okay, so I'm just going to lengthen wire. Now, I'm not going to run one continuous wire. No. So what my plan is, is that I have this little power box, junction box. 
Okay, these guys aren't connected. They're all separate. Okay, so you want to make sure of that. You don't want to make sure you grab one of these and come to find out they're all connected through. Okay, that uh, would be bad. Don't want to do that. So this is, these are all separate. It's just a junction box, power box. And so what my plan is, is that I will have soldered extra wire onto those so I can put it on one side and put the adjacent wire where it's supposed to go onto the other side. And then I have an area in here that if push comes to shove, I can split this thing apart and I don't have to go in and clip wires again or anything else because it'll just be here at the junction. So that was kind of, yeah, I always want to give myself an out, right? Don't, <laughs> I didn't want to go ahead and hardwire everything in. Now, you could, you could just go ahead and solder it in, but you're going to make sure that you have, A, have enough wire that if you do need to move this or anything else, you're going to want enough wire that you can get that track out of the way if you do need to disconnect it from your layout. This is an easier way of going because we can just disconnect the wires on one side, you know, move them out. Okay. So that is my plan of attack. Now, with this being that we have all these different wires going on, first thing I want to do is go in here and I want to take these wire looms, okay, and I want to mark them, okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of tape on each side of these. Okay, I'm going to number them. One, two, there's what? Four groups here, right? So there's one group, two group, no, three, four. Okay. And I'm going to put one and one, two and two, three and three, four and four. That way, when it comes down to here, I know that I have my wires are going to come up to one side, other side, blah, blah, blah. Right? So, yeah, that's the plan. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I am going to cut wire. But before I cut wire, I'm going to go ahead and number my wires, right? So I don't mess them up, don't get them crossed, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and clip them. So we come back, we will start there. The surgery would have commenced. <laughs> I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay. So here we go. We, <laughs> I've done it. I've, I've removed the, the growth. So I went ahead and I snipped my wires and it felt so good to, to remove this thing from this. So here, let, let's, let's look at this. Look at that. No more growth. The cyst is gone. <laughs> so kind of cool. All right. So I'm all excited about this. This is so much fun. So I'm going to go ahead and set this off to the side. You notice that I have everything numbered. So I have four and four and three and three and two and two and one and one. Okay. So, and I'm not removing the God. No, we don't want to remove our, our little pieces of tape here, right? Because it's very, very important that we match wires with wires. Okay. Now, the digital system has four separate wires on this, the scale electric arc. Okay, so there's four separate wires for the digital. And I went ahead and stripped these guys out, separated them out, fanned them out. But you have those four for digital. These two right here for the, uh, the rail, as far as the power to the rails. For one rail, your other rail. And then here's the other um, lane as far as the digital system goes. Okay. Again, very important. Don't want to cross wires, everything else. Probably put out another thing. If you are worried about your warranty from Scale Electric on your power base or from Carrera or from anybody, okay. If you do this, I'm sure they're not going to warranty nothing. They're going to be like, you did what? You removed the growth? No, no, forbidden. You can't do that. So if, if you're going to do this, right, understand that if your power base takes a poop, 
you're probably not going to be able to call up Scale Electric or Carrera or anybody and say, hey, uh, I just bought my power base and my power base is no good. You need to send me another one, you know. Um, probably not going to work, guys. So before you do this, if, if that is important to you, I do not recommend doing this because once you cross the point, the line of demarcation, which is the final, the snipping of the lines, you have now crossed into no man's loan and man, lands, man, no man's land, and you are on your own from here on out because they're not going to support you on this. So they, they, they really, they, they don't like it when you remove growth. Yeah, they, they want to keep your track sick. We, we don't want that. We got to get rid of the growth. So that's what we got going on. So I went ahead and I stripped these wires and I was kind of thinking, I was thinking, you know, I could probably take my block and I could bring it right up to here and I could just put it right in. But, you know, I think what I want to do is I want to actually have a little bit of separation. Okay, I want a little bit of wiggle room. I don't want this right up next to everything all tight. Um, so what I am going to go ahead and I'm going to solder just some little sections onto these to go ahead and hook on. Plus, the other thing is the gauge of this wire is extremely small. Okay, um, I don't know about you, but sometimes my fingers get in the way when I'm dealing with really, really small wire. It's much easier to deal with a little bit heavier gauge wire than a teeny tiny little wire, especially when I'm trying to hook them up on a junction box. So that is, is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and probably make some little six inch um, pieces of wire here and then go ahead and uh, heat shrink my joints and everything so I have no chance of these things arcing off each, you know, on each other. and. Uh, hook it up then to my block on one side. And then I'll do the yet the the other the same way. And I'll go ahead and solder those all up. And again I'll I'll probably have on on the track side because I want enough room, okay, that I can disconnect my track. I don't have to per se disconnected from the block, but I want enough slack that if I want to take my track, take it up and flip it over or something like that, I want enough room that I can do that. So for myself, it's probably going to be maybe a, a couple feet of wire, you know, um, depending on where your power base is located on your table. It might be less than that. Heck, it might be all the way up to 10 feet. I don't know. It all depends on, on what you got going on and where you're going to mount the brain and stuff for the system. So that is, that is my plan. And also the other thing is that when I'm going to keep the, obviously keep the numbers on this side as well. And when I bring the wires down, I will then make a second set of numbers for the wires that I bring down into here so that it's next to next to this block so that I don't have to go two feet or so away to see what this is and then try to fish it. No, you want to make it real easy on you. So we know that we have one over here. We want to know that one is over here as well. Okay, so we can match them up. All right, so that is my next step. I'm going to go ahead and solder in my little pigtails off to this. I'm gonna go ahead and get them mounted to this block. And then I will have my wire soldered onto here. I will not mount them onto this yet. That happens later on when we decide they're gonna go ahead and put this on the layout. But when we come back, we'll have wire everywhere. <laughs> okay, so I will see you guys in a little bit. I got some I got some soldering ahead of me. Okay, so I'm back and I went ahead and I have the, the main box, the power box, all wired up. So I went ahead and used that, that block here and went ahead and fastened on one side and all soldered in. 
So just did some little pigtails off of that, just so it gives me a little bit of room to work with. So I have that all done. So let me go ahead and set that over here. And then the track itself, went ahead and spliced that all in, did some uh, heat shrink and, and soldered all my joints and made myself a harness. And it's about two feet long. So what I'm gonna do now is I have this all together here. I went ahead and, and taped these together with their um, the groups of wires that they belong to, you know, one, two, three, and four. And I went ahead and transferred some numbers down here at the end too so then when it comes up to here it makes it a lot easier as far as matching them up number to number and then also as far as the colors you know making sure that you have um your your colors correct you don't want to don't want to cross your colors very important to have you know a bunch of different colors of wire so you know on this it had the red it had the black also had a yellow and a gray. So I used a white and a yellow. But um, you know, that way it just it just makes it a lot easier trying to figure this stuff out. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take my track piece, take it up to the table, find out exactly where my wire loom is gonna go through. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it underneath the track itself and then get that uh hole drilled and I'll go ahead and snake this through. So that's my next step. All right. So we come back. I'll have this guy in the track. I'll have a piece of track on the layout with no power base and we'll go ahead and I'll, I'll show you how I've mounted up the box underneath the track. Okay. So at this point I went ahead and I installed the, uh, the digital track right here. So cool thing about this is that I know what direction it's going because the uh, the power base mounts on the side of it and has a mark right here. So that makes it real easy. It's you're, you're not going to get it messed up as far as the wrong direction if you just pay attention to, you know, where it all came apart at. So that's installed and I went ahead and fed my wires right down here. I have this little shelf that I built that the power base then will just go ahead and slide right into this area. And then I have a, a hole down here that I can run my power cables up through and then plug into the face of it right there. So kind of kind of cleans it all up. <clears throat> so as far as this, the wires themselves, if we come down inside, you can see I went ahead and cut a hole, pretty good size hole here in the uh, the base table of the layout. And then those wires will just drop down right into there. And if we come down underneath the table, right here, you can see where they drop down through. And then I went ahead and put a bracket to support the wires so that it's not, you know, they aren't hanging off of where the solder points were at. Okay, a little bit of support so it doesn't have all that weight working against it. And then that comes into the back side of this little box, which was just scabbed onto the, the bottom side of the table. And uh, yeah, there we go. So what I need to do now is now that I have my wires through, and I went ahead and transferred my numbers up here at the end. So that when I come up here, I can match it up to the numbers that are up here. And I can make sure that my wires are correct. So at this point, I just need to go ahead and hook those guys up to this. And we'll dance a jig and cross our fingers and power it up. And uh, hopefully everything works. <laughs> okay, I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so I got it all hooked up. It's all wired in. And now I went ahead and turned on power. So moment of truth, let's see if this thing actually works. <laughs> so I put two NSRs down and let's try one of them. So, okay, one lane works. Now let's grab another controller. And two. So both lanes are successful. So yes, <laughs> yes, we got rid of the growth. Good deal. So. There we go. So it's all off. 
It's underneath the table. You come back. I'll go ahead and show you how everything looks. Okay, so I'm back down here. There is our piece of track. The power supply is no longer alongside the track. So we got rid of that growth. We took out the scalpel. We chopped the damn thing up and we got rid of it. So now, and that look better. All nice and clean. There's no big gigantic box sitting there. And now we can go ahead and take this scenery and bring it all the way down through. And we don't have this big, what are we going to do about that? And try to fashion a hut or, or something like that or the top of it. But there that is. Now just drop down here on the side. There is my, the box. So I have that. And it's just, it's just setting in here. Okay. You can see the, the wires on the back side. They go through the little slot back over there. made a gap. So they come through on the other side. Excuse the mess, guys. But yeah, the underside of my layout is turned into slash storage as well. But there are the wires there. And then they go up through the track there. And there's that bracket I showed you guys about earlier. So yeah, I got enough slack that if I want to, I can either bring the power base out you know, to take a look at stuff, or I can actually take this track and bring it up and get it out of the way and not have to disconnect everything. There's enough play. So that makes a real nice plus on the actual uh, box itself where I use that uh, power junction over there, the junction box to go ahead and, and make it so I can disconnect everything as well. So there is that. I went ahead and just kind of took some of those wire, I guess they call these wire staples, and just kind of line my wires up so they go on down. Still got to figure out, like I said, it's a mess under here. But yeah, I got my hooks there and stuff like that. So it's, it's getting there slowly. But this is a major, major plus. So it worked. <laughs> everything works thank god it works because power bases are not exactly cheap so all right when we come back let's go ahead and we'll wrap this all up all right so there we go another video done and <laughs> we got rid of it it's gone chopped it off relocated it and cleaned up the surface of the layout so major bonus and it all works <laughs> so that that is a major bonus all by itself now I, you know I, i've been looking at this looking at this is like I, I i gotta do it so i'm glad that i finally got that done now i have a clear area that i can go ahead and bring that scenery up the straightaway and up the hill so ah, cool and i don't have to fashion some little hut and try to hide it right i don't you know no it's that's just that's just not not okay so yeah <laughs> there we go now like i stated earlier in this video okay if you're gonna do this then any type of warranty or anything like that through scale electric or if you have a carrera or scale auto or polycar or any of these other plastic manufacturers of track if you do this it's going to void your warranty. Okay. Just want to put that out there. I want someone to go, okay, I did this and it screwed all up and I melted down my system and I called up scale electric or I called up Carrera and they said, you did what? <laughs> no, just remember if you do this, a make sure you dot your I's and cross your T's. So everything is hooked up correctly. Okay. A number one, and B, once you do this, it's a point of no return as far as trying to, you know, any type of warranty that's, that's with the system. My, my power base I've had now for like over five years. And if there was a warranty, it was long gone years ago. So it was kind of like, okay, well, let's roll the dice and see if we can do this. But it worked. <laughs> so cool. Now. With all that, this video is done. Yep, it's done. 
But there's a couple things I want to touch on, like I normally touch on at the end of the videos, right? So we still have that, which is the Facebook group. We still have the Instagram group. So we've got those two. We have this, which is the Patreon group. And again, the Patreon group is really cool. You got to come over and check it out. In fact, we're getting ready to go ahead and do a Patreon build, which on that right there, the little pub that comes from those guys over there, which is Racetrack Scenics, is really cool. We're all going to go ahead and just sit down, right? And we're going to go ahead and build this kit together. And it's kind of cool, all the different ideas and stuff like that, because we all have different ideas in, in imagination to put into this thing, right? So really none of the kits ever look the same. And it's not so much that, you know, this guy's better. No, it's just everybody has their own idea of how the kit's going to go. So it's, it's really cool. And you're all kind of building there and answering questions and stuff like that or bouncing ideas off other people. So that's kind of cool. And it doesn't happen in one Zoom meeting at all. No, this type of thing, this kit right here will probably last for, I'm saying, probably at least three Zoom meetings would be my guess, at least. It's kind of a smaller kit. So yeah, that's kind of cool. If you want to go ahead and take part in something like this, go over to the Patreon group. Go check that out. Like I said prior, there is a free membership now available with the Patreon. And what that does, it just kind of opens the doors a little bit more and you guys can see some of the posts and stuff that are up on the board. It's just kind of one of those things to kind of, you know, sometimes you want to kick the tires a little bit before you actually purchase a car. Well, it's kind of the same thing. You can go in there and kind of kick around a little bit and just check it out. So go on over, check that one out. Now, get rid of all that stuff. We'll just push it over there. Okay. Now, what we'll go ahead and do, and we'll talk about this. And what this is, is Boone's Design. And Boone's Design is a store that I decided, what the heck, you know, take a fall, mock, knock some sense into me, and let's just go ahead and do this. And what that is, is a bunch of stuff that I'm putting together and creating an online store. As far as guardrail, not only for 132nd, but 164th. I'm doing crash fence. So I have my 132nd crash fence that you guys have seen. I made a video on it. I'm also going to be building some 164th crash fence, which is going to be extremely similar to the 132nd, which is probably some of the most realistic looking crash fence that's out there. Okay. You can go get the plastic stuff and stuff like that, but it's not the same. It doesn't look the same. It doesn't feel the same. It doesn't even smell the same. <laughs> But yes, there's that. And there's some other stuff that I want to go ahead and do as well that are coming. Okay. That stuff's in the works. And on top of that, I'm also doing commission builds. So if you want to have a diorama built, or maybe there's some, some buildings that you want to have done or something like that, contact me. My prices are not skyrocketing. In fact, I've had people talk to me about this and go, you could charge a lot more. And I'm like, yeah, I could, but I don't want to. I don't want to set my, my, my area into somewhere where only a select few can do it. That's not why I'm here. That's not why I started the, 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 the YouTube channel or any of the other stuff. If we're going to grow the hobby, there's some sacrifices and stuff that have to be made so that more people can be involved in different aspects of the hobby. And that's kind of my idea. Yes, I could charge a lot for certain things and I'm not. So there we go. Get that off under my hat, whatever. Yeah, but now you guys know. So if you have anything, just go ahead and message me. This right now is on Facebook. But I also have like, again, I have the Instagram group and stuff like that. There's Messenger and all those type of things. If you're seeing this and you're kind of like, well, I'm kind of, you know, send me a message. We can chat, figure out some different stuff. If you need help as far as planning anything, as far as with your layout, you know, message me. What the heck, right? <laughs> it's, it's just, yeah, why not? So there that is. And there is a website that's coming. It's under construction. 
Sometimes these things take a little bit of time to put together, but that is in the works. So it'll make it a little bit easier and stuff. It's kind of cool. We're going to go ahead and it's going to be a cool website when it's all said and done. So that is what's going on with Boone's design, right? And you'll notice in the YouTube uh, channel itself, if you go down through there, there's now a new section called Boone's design. And what that will be is different things like guardrail. I did a, I did a video on guardrail for the 164th and what that is is just showing the guardrail showing how to put it together how to apply it how to bend it how to do all sorts of different things so when you get this you're not looking at this kit going what do i do now no so i'm making sure that instead of putting like you know instructions in there with paper no i'm actually putting a video it's like why should i write down on a piece of paper how to do something when i have a youtube channel and i'm used to doing videos so let's just do a video and let's just show together how to do this because sometimes it's easier to see someone do it and, and to do it with them than just to try to read it and diagnose and go okay i think this is what this means right <laughs> so yeah so Keep an eye on that portion. There is going to be other videos that are going to come up on that. I have to do a video on the 132nd. I have to do a video on the crash fence as far as how to bend them, how to do all sorts of to manipulate them. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of stuff going on. So there we go. I think I covered almost everything. I think. Yeah, we covered that. We covered this. We did Boone's design. Yeah. So. There we go, guys. Ah, I think I'm done, right? So, yeah, let's just kind of recap real quick. Got all that. We did our surgery, chopped it off, got rid of that big, disgusting growth on the side of the track. It's clean. We can lay down scenery. Yeah, I'm a happy camper. <laughs> all right. So, ah, yeah, we're done. We're done. I, th I think we're done. Yes, we're done. <laughs> we're done. Hey, we're done. Okay, so we're saying all that. Next time on Boone's Slot Car Garage, I don't know. I've got a live stream coming up on Saturday. We got to do some more scenery. You might want to check that one out. That's Boone, <laughs> Boone's Slot Car Garage behind the curtain. Kind of describe what's going on at the beginning of the video. If you want to recap, go back to the beginning. Check that all out. But, yep, Saturdays is the time that I'm going to go ahead and do that. So, <sighs> all right. So, next time, I don't know. It's going to be something. There's a lot of stuff going on on Deception. So, I have not a clue. We'll just see what happens. All right? Okay. I'll see you guys then. Hi, this is Boone Slot Car Garage. Let's do this.